All right, man. We got the legendary badass in the house today. What's up? What's up, world? <laughs> Man, uh, we really appreciate you coming by Urban City TV today, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks yeah. for having me. We're we in here with a legend. Legend I grew up at listening to, man. Um, so, Badass, why don't you uh, give all our viewers out there just a background and the evolution of Badass and who you are and, and where you came from and how you got into the hip-hop game? Um, that's dope. Um. For one, I've been in love with hip-hop since I was a little single-digit kid, probably, you know, seven, eight years old. I think I learned uh, The Message, uh, Melly Mel. I learned that song. And it, it was like, I like it to this day. Still one of my um, favorite hip-hop records of all times, but I didn't understand it as well as I knew it. So it was kind of one of those things like learning different language. When um, I used to hear in my early days that Snoop would go to Japan before I went and they um, would sing every word and they don't even know English. It kind of, it, it, it fascinated me a bit to hear that and I was like, how could somebody sing a, a song and they don't even know the language of the song? But I had to really consider the fact that when I was seven, eight years old, I'm singing the song the same way, every single word, but I don't really know this language. I don't know half the shit they talk about on a song, but I could have sing it word for word, you know? So it was kind of different. I feel like that's the similar concept of them doing that. So that was just how I fell in love with hip hop. And my city got on the map from Snoop Doggy Dog. Shout out to the big homie. Okay. so. Um, you got some of your friends coming up in, in the hip-hop game, Snoop Dogg, and um, Snoop Dogg gets put on, and then he starts bringing, um, he has the Dog Pound, Corrupt, and, and Daz. How, how did you get introduced on the scene? Well, um, I met Snoop. First of all, I, start, I got introduced to Snoop Dogg's music early, not knowing that certain ones of my family members, I got a couple of family members that's, um, that knew Snoop before I did. I might even ran into him previously then I met him, but um, that's neither here nor there. But we had been around each other since earlier. A couple of my older cousins and my aunt knew him. Um, his cousin Joe Cool, like, he, um, he knows my aunt and some of my family. But, um, I was uh, hanging with my homies, and um, we had already been on, on to the rap scene. One of my buddies, um, Darachi, I did a skit that was titled Darachi's MC on my first album. Um, one of my uh, teenage partners that I used to roll with every day, and um, one of his cousins was like super cool with Snoop, and he used to always bring his tapes with Snoop on them. I think, I won't say, that, um, I'm not 100% sure if that was the first time I ever heard Snoop Dogg, but I do, my fondest memories is my homie Darachi bringing over tapes like, badass, you gotta hear this Snoop Dogg freestyle, you know? And this was every bit of like 1990, 91, and um, Snoop hadn't even hooked up with Dre yet the first time I heard his stuff. So um, a, lot of, a lot of people in Long Beach was making music, some of that, um, some of those earlier songs was hitting the streets, coming to our junior highs and our high schools. Shout out to uh, the Dove Shack. They was called Big Nuts back then. They had a, a song called uh, um, Take Some For Now and Save Some For Later. And it was like buzzing through the city. To this day, I always see them and I, I'll be like, take some for now and save some for later. So it was one of those hit records. Domino was popping. Um, uh, shout out my boy School Blow Kia, a uh, part of my low life crew. His cousin is Domino, so early early in the '90s, I was hearing Domino records. He was on um, the Bloods and Crips project. He was Genuine Draft, exactly. Right? So we was listening to Genuine Draft. We was listening to a lot of his stuff as Domino before the world heard him as Domino, and. Um, all of those things was just influential to have the city. I honestly, as a teenager, I didn't really, I didn't really trip off of it that way. That it was influencing me to do it. I was already in love with hip hop. I had already wrote my first rhymes, probably 11, 12 years old. This was years before that, you know. So 
I was in love with hip hop and as it started coming, it was just so local to us because you gotta think, Domino had put out a record, but Bloods and the Crips album was not like NWA, not like LL Cool J where it was big. We knew it was local. You know, we knew that it was people far that knew about it, but it wasn't a big thing. So um, for for us to have local stuff that that we that we looked at like, oh, this is shit, you know, stuff that we jam. For us to even make records or even think about doing a song, the best part about it is that Snoop Dogg blew it up to a level that we start making records that got listened to by people that we never thought would hear about us or fans that listen to Run DMC listen to our records. Fans that listen to Beastie Boys listen to our records. Fans that listen to people that we loved that we would never think that these same people would even get a hold of music that we did, you know, let alone love it. Now we got a platform to where Snoop hooks up with Dre and it put our city on the spotlight. And you look at it 20 years, something odd years later, I can't even name how many rappers is from Long Beach right now. When I could tell you every rapper from Long Beach that I knew and was good friends with that was famous, you know? And even the ones that weren't. I could tell you who was next up in Long Beach. A f you know, 15 years ago, I could be like, yeah, what's the name about the blow? I could, before Goldie Loke got on, I was like, Goldie Loke next, you know? But now it's like, I don't even know who's coming out the city next. It's so many kids making music. The It's so many kids that, I would say um, post death row era, post um, us, like our, our early, put it like this, the second phase, I feel like a lot of kids came out, a lot of, a lot of names, you know, got put on the scene, but they had yet to blow up. They hadn't, they hadn't made like success without having features with us, you know, things like that. But now you have artists that, they bubbled their way up so big that we had to come home and do songs with them or, you know, they, they became forced to be reckoned with. So now I look at it like we are a small mecca for hip hop, yeah. you know, and it, it showed over the last 20 years that there's a lot of talent out of Long Beach. And not only is there talent, what happens is when you're coming up under a wave that's, that's, that's it's, um, it's prominent, it's um, it's it's sought after. People got the the eye on it, but there's kids that are probably 10, 12 years old that in the next five to ten years they'll do music not because not just because they want to do music, but I come from a place that's like a a, a Hollywood of of hip hop music, yeah. you know. It's a mecca. We could we could we could we could um come with good stuff here. Kids like uh, Vince Staples, like he didn't blow up with a badass feature or a Snoop Dogg feature, you know? He was making noise. When I first heard of Vince Staples, it was my little cousin telling me, yo, one of my homies is booming right now. That was how I heard of him, you know? And I feel like that's basically what I'm explaining that it was a time that you wasn't coming out of Long Beach and blowing up if you didn't know Snoop or hang with any of us. You know, now the city is just so on, on blast where people know his talent there. People, people hone their talents because they're from there.